Hello folks, my name is Chris. Welcome back. Another gear overview video for you today. We've got some more first bay kit to look at. This is the Wind Cheetah Softshell Jacket, a recent release by First Beer. And it's actually my brother, he's kind of lent it to me for the purposes of the video. Uh, he picked it up because basically he wanted a, a good, high quality, uh, general purpose, outer layer, uh, soft shell for, you know, for layering over, layering over insulation to, uh, to, to cut the wind, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of water resistance and, and obviously a good quality item. Doesn't look too tactical. And uh, I think it's a pretty good choice here. Now I'm gonna start off with the bad because there are some slight problems with this jacket. I know First Beer aren't gonna have a problem with me talking about this because they're a good company. And uh, you know, they, there's all their other stuff is fantastic. I've never had anything else from them that's had any issues at all. There's a couple issues with this. But I'm gonna address why that's happened and why it's not actually a problem going forward if you're looking into picking up one of these jackets. So like I say, bad things first off. On the, the main front pockets here, the issue we had when they first turned up, he's, he's cleared them out already, but basically where the, the inside and the zip here, there's still a few threads hanging about. And there, there was literally like a whole fucking spool of thread, like loose crap hanging about in here that hadn't been cleared out of the factory the way it should have. And that was in both pockets and it, it jammed the zips quite substantially. Um, when he first tried to use it. He's cleared it out, they're fine now, but QA issue, um, Q, you know, quality checking uh, that wouldn't have happened normally. And again, I'll explain why, what's going on with that in a minute. Other two other things with these little toggles here that you often see for adjusting elastic. On this, there's two for adjusting the elastic inside the waist. This one doesn't work. There's also one on the hood here, this toggle, it's got no tension on it. It doesn't, it doesn't actually stop the elastic moving at all. It should, you should be able to set the elastic where you want it and then it'll stay in place, but that's not happening. I'm not sure why, basically the, the springs inside them are there as they should be, but they're just not doing their job uh, and actually putting tension on that, on that cord to keep it in place. So again, quality checking would have picked that up. I'm not sure if those components are like assembled when the jacket's made or they come from another source. I'm not sure what's happening there. Basically what's happened here is this is not a US made item. All of the first beer kit I've ever had is made in America and the quality checking is excellent. And that's kind of what you're paying for because obviously it's not cheap gear, but if you get it, generally 99.9% .9 of the time, it's bloody, you know, it's gonna be pretty perfect. Now what's happened is some of the first batches of these jackets were assembled in El Salvador uh, rather than in America. They use US materials, all mil-spec good stuff, but foreign made. I spoke to First Spirit Shot Show, one of the head guys there. Basically what's happened is they were not able to actually manufacture themselves. So they tried to get it done by someone else in the States. It cost too much. They went outside to a foreign manufacturer, realized the problems with that, wanted to go back to Berry compliance, had, had a look around, they, you know, had some issues trying to find somewhere in the States that was good enough and would do it for a reasonable price, eventually found that. So yeah, this is one of that first batch. It's got a couple of faulty parts to it. But if you're looking at picking one of these up, contact First Beer. They've moved already over to US manufacturer on everything, but the multicam at the time I'm recording this video. So contact them, go through the website, give them an email, make sure you get a US made wind cheetah jacket and uh, you will be good. I'm, I have no doubt, no concerns in my mind whatsoever that these sort of issues will not happen when it's a US made item. So let's get into the jacket itself. Front top starting, full length zip, nice YKK zip, cord and then a plastic pull on it. Nice and easy to get when you've got cold hands and got thick gloves on. You've got adjustment with these toggles here that are secured by edging tape adjustment cord for the hood around the actual front of the hood there fairly plain on the front um no you know you've got a few pockets like enough without going crazy on the pockets and making it look too tactical and, and just ridiculous so you've got your standard front pockets here good quality zips again you can all, get all the way up into into the top of the chest area with those plenty of storage space little garages for the zips made a hyperlon 
Same YKK zips again, nice cord pulls with the plastic pieces, very good quality. On the sleeves, what I really like is these Velcro fields. I'm gonna bring that up close to the camera. What you'll note is they're nice low profile. This is actually the quiet loop stuff. And they are, they don't screen tactical, but you've still got the facility there to actually put your patches on without having an enormous, massive area of loop that, that is really obvious. And obviously with the, the logo cut out into it, again, you can still attach the patches, but it looks more like an aesthetic addition rather than being a tactical jacket. It's obviously, if you're used to this sort of gear, it, it's going to look like that to you. But I would say to most other people, it's fairly inconspicuous. Underneath that, nice big arm pockets, very tall, You've got drainage grommets sewn into them. Same zips, same garages on those. And then you've got Hypalon tabs. And again, the low profile, quiet loop for adjusting your cuffs. Everything's mirrored on the other side. So we'll flip it around to the back. Hood, nice large oversized hood for helmets. Got a brim peak there. Another loop field for attaching IR, whatever. You can adjust the, the back of the hood area, the way it go, where it goes around your head as well, or you could if this toggle wasn't broken. Um, first bear logo sewn in there, but it's covered when the hood's down or when the hood's not worn, sorry. Other than that, plain at the back, the only thing to talk about on the back really is that it, it does go very low down. When you're actually wearing it, it'll go really low down and cover your ass. So when you sit down, it's got that little bit of protection there, a little bit more protection from the wind from the back. Um, obviously, if you, if you can seal carry around the back, that's going to be an issue, but that's something you're always going to have to sacrifice depending on, on how you want your jacket cut. If you want more coverage, it's going to hinder getting stuff from your belt if you've got, you know, inside the waistband carry it items. Looking on the inside, not a lot to talk about. One downside to the design for my mind is this, this adjustment for the hood that goes around the front of the hood. When you, when you cinch that, that, this elastic just flaps around on the inside. It do, it's not rooted to be stored away anywhere as you tighten it. Would have been nice to see that getting tucked away or sort of looped back. Because if you look on the, the waist tightening, Got a little tab of material and then that, that elastic is held in place there all the excess from when you tighten it so i would have liked to see that at the top it's got a, a, a little bit of edging tape to secure it a bit but it there could have been something a bit lower down i don't think you're really going to notice that massively pretty minor issue the pockets are mesh so that you can open them and not only is it a pocket but that's also now a vent because the the inside material is mesh Obviously you've got your pit zips, there's two zips, so you can open from either side or just open it partially in the middle. Opens all the way up like so, if I can get it. You can really open, get yourself some good ventilation there. Very nice to have. Same good quality zips, same easily accessible, easily usable pulls on them. Now obviously I've got a few other soft shell jackets and the material on this is a little bit different. Um, I think what they've gone with is something that they really wanted to absolutely block wind, 100% any of that cold air getting through to you. It's a 91% it's a nylon, 9% polyester. And it's, a, it's not very stretchy, but it's got a very, very durable feel to it. I think it's gonna be very tough, very resistant to abrasion. I can tell that just by looking at it. Um, how the breathability is, I don't know just yet. I'd have to run around in it to test that out. This is just an initial overview. Um, but to test that wind resistance, I had to think a little bit outside of the box. So uh, we'll cut to some footage of uh, what we did for that. All right, guys, wind resistance test on the wind cheater. Obviously, I can't make the wind blow. I can't control the weather, surprisingly. Um, so I figured the best way to actually test whether this thing blocks the wind is, uh, is with one of these. So we've got a little bit of a hill. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much just going to go, to go down as quick as I can. One thing I've noticed recently when I cycle my bike around on my work is that obviously a wind resistant layer is a lot more comfortable, keeps you a lot warmer than one that's uh, permeable to the wind. So yeah, this is the best test I could think of to, to check this quality on the, on the jacket. So let's, uh, let's get as fast as I can and let's see how it goes. Is that was definitely 
definitely, definitely felt faster than it looked on the tape, I can tell you guys. Um, probably, probably not that fast compared to the winds you know, that you might get in a worst case scenario if the wind is really strong. I'm just wearing a, a plain cotton t-shirt underneath here, so if the wind was getting through the jacket, I would have definitely felt it. But it definitely did a good job there, blocking the wind out as it was coming down the hill, so thumbs up on that one. So after conducting that test, pretty confident in saying wind cheater jacket blocks the wind like a champ. Good stuff on that one. Um, like I say, I, w I wish the, uh, the video showed the speed as, as fast as I felt I was going because my eyes genuinely were streaming up. Um, it, um, it doesn't look that quick on the video though, but yeah, uh, compared, to, compared to just like a fleece jacket or something that lets the wind through, you can seriously tell a difference when you're, when you're cycling at a, a decent pace like that. With a, when you're wearing a, a garment that will really block the wind. So I'll leave the link down in the description below for uh, for the First Beer web store. You can see the, the pricing, the color options that the wind cheater comes in. As I say, at the time of uploading, Multicam's still being foreign made, so you probably want to go with a solid color. I'd imagine they're going to want the Multicam to be very compliant, so they'll probably move that to US manufacture later on down the line. If you've got any questions about the jacket, guys, pop them down in the comments. I'd like to know what you guys think of it. Um, what your experience have been in the past with different types of soft shells which brands you prefer what you find works different materials etc etc it's a very interesting subject i think um thank you for watching if you want to see more gear reviews consider subscribing and uh, if you enjoyed the video consider leaving a like It'd be much appreciated thanks again i'll see you next time